Hello everyone, welcome back to Electrified Outdoors. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the charging setup in my garage. Now whether you've already got your EV or you're in the process of getting one, this is the first consideration you need to think about and that's how you're gonna charge it at home or at the office. Now as you saw in the beginning of the video, I have two Tesla wall connectors. Now this unit here is a Tesla J1772 wall connector. Let's take this off of here real quick. And you can see this will fit any electric vehicle other than a Tesla. In order to work on a Tesla, it'll need the J1772 to Tesla adapter. Now it functions very similar to the Tesla chargers. It has the trigger here to unlock from the vehicle and it does have a 24 foot cable. Most importantly, it also supports the Tesla power sharing. That's what I have here. As you'll see in a moment, I only have a 200 amp service here, but these two chargers are set up to share 60 amps of total power. So each one of these chargers can charge at 48 amps on their own, or if they're both plugged in and charging, they will charge at 30 amps each. So let's take a look at the other charger and see what I've got going on over there. Okay, everyone. So over here, I have my Gen 3 Tesla wall connector. This is actually the first one I installed and I have a link to the video where I installed it. I'll put that down in the video description. I'll also put links to where you can pick up both the Gen 3 Tesla wall connector, the J1772, as well as the new Tesla wall connector that's the universal wall connector. That's gonna have both the Tesla connection on it and also an adapter as well to charge your non-Tesla electric vehicles. Now, with all that said, I do have two Rivians, so I need to use an adapter for this particular charger. And the one I use is the Tesla Tap Mini. I also have a shock flow adapter that I carry with me. Both of them are great adapters, but this adapter takes my Tesla connection, converts it to a J1772 so I can use it on a non-Tesla EV. What this allows me to do is easily holster this onto the wall when we unplug it from the Rivian Instead of taking this off, I just holster this right into the wall here like this. And then when we come home with the vehicle, we unhook it and plug right into the vehicle. So it's very handy. But this, as well as my other Tesla wall connector, talk to each other. And if they can't talk to one another, if they lose connection, they will drop down to the 30 amp that I have set up in the Tesla PowerShare configuration. Now, I'll also link to the installation manual down below. And in that installation manual, it'll go through the provisioning procedure if you decide to put in two Tesla wall connectors in your garage like we have here. You can install up to six of these. So if you have six electric vehicles or maybe you're installing these at a business, you can install up to six of these and share a predefined amount of electricity. Now conveniently, the panel is located right here, but if your panel's in another location, that's not gonna matter. What I'm gonna show you here is where I have both of my EV charging circuits. I have two 60 amp breakers here that are on completely separate circuits. The reason why it's important to point this out is because the Tesla instructions require you, no junction boxes, none of that stuff. You have to have two separate circuits. But the nice thing is, when you're coming for an electrical inspection, it counts as one 60 amp load because I have 60 amps allocated and the software on the chargers will never let both of the chargers draw more than 60 amps at any one given time. So even though we have 120 amps worth of breakers here, it counts just as 60 amps. And that's important because we only have 200 amp service here. You may have electricians that tell you you don't have enough capacity to install more than one charger this is a way to get around that by having the charger share the total amount of electricity. And you can see some other stuff I have, also a Sense Home Energy Monitor. And the nice thing about that is it allows me to monitor my electricity usage and it sends me an alert when I've hit a new peak. So as you know, you don't wanna be pulling any more than 80% of the maximum rated capacity of your panel out of there continuously. So I have a 200 amp service, that means continuous load, I don't ever want it to go over 160 amps. What the Sense Home Energy Monitor allows me to do is it allows me to see what my peak draw is 
And I've gotten nowhere near that. I think I've gotten maybe somewhere close to 115 amps. But this is a must have if you have a smaller service before you install a second charger to kind of get the lay of the land, if you will, to see how much power you're consuming, what your normal continuous load is. This gives you insight, which is very important, into what your electrical load is. It's better than load calculations. Now it is $300, I'll put a link down in the video description for that as well. Okay folks, what do you use for your EV charging? Or if you don't have a charger yet, which one do you plan to get? Let us know down in the comments section. As always, remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified, and thank you guys so much for watching.